wanted to know some of the ideas that we kicked around years ago. And um, so we, we got to talking about what, 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 what could we do with downtown Sharon. What were some of the ideas that we had talked about before when we first built the Vocal Group Hall of Fame and Museum and Jim bought all the properties around and what are we going to do? Where, where are they going to go? Do we, what, do we see a vision? And um, so Karen looked around and she found some reading material and she found the Boomtown book. And we've all read this and I don't know how many of you have read it, but it's, it's really, really good reading. It's a synopsis of a number of cities and small towns in the United States who have gone through what, we've, what we're going through. Um, it kind of reshapes your whole way of thinking that anything's possible, you just have to look at your resources. We have lots of resources. These empty buildings are really resources, and that's the way we need to look at them. Um, we have to reshape the way we want to do business. There's a lot of people doing businesses from their homes, and um, Elaine Joel with Views and Voices features a lot of these home businesses. These people are ready to move out of their homes because their businesses are so big. So one of the things that we talked about was taking our downtown properties, making them more attractive, and bringing people downtown, and focusing on what could possibly be here. And one of the things we said was we really need to brighten up the downtown area before we can get businesses down here. So we talked about different things going on in my that said, let's paint the windows. Let, you know, let's how can we paint the windows? And Karen says, well, there's an organization, Sammy, that formed out of the Blues Fest last year. And I said, well, a lot of people across the United States, and I traveled for about a year and a half uh, while I was gone from winter, all across the United States, big towns, small towns, and everything. And the artists and the uh, creative people are keeping a lot of these small towns alive. That's what's bringing in your tourists. That's what's keeping people traveling. That's what's building businesses. Because when people see the, uh, the, the activity in the community, they're bringing companies in. They're bringing the, the medium-sized companies in. They're bringing the, the fabricators and the small manufacturers back to America. So we talked about painting the town, painting the windows, and Mrs. Well, let's, let's have a contest. Let's, let's go out and talk to these people. So we talked to the same group, and they said, the artists were just dying to paint the wind. They wanted to paint anything. They'd paint the walls and the sidewalks. They'd paint each other. They didn't care. They just wanted something going on. So I went to the merchants, and I talked to the merchants, and I said, we want to do a paint the town contest. Can we put ballot boxes in? We want to... That's all I asked them for. Every... They were so excited. You're going to do what we're going to paint the town. Wonderful. Put the ballot boxes in. So we put up the prize money, we contacted the schools, we sent out emails, we did everything. And we had 53 groups come in to paint, and they had the time of their life. The school kids, the teachers, everybody was so excited. Now, my favorite story is the kids from St. Joe's had to paint on a Wednesday night because they were going out of town on a field trip. So George of Penn, Ohio, he plays his music, you know, really loud on the street. Now, these are all mall babies. These are young children. They've, they've, been, they've been shopping at the mall. They don't really know what downtown communities are like. But they're loose in downtown Sharon for an evening with, with Jeff Zollner as their teacher. So, you know, they think, oh, we can walk to the Quaker Steak and Lube. We can walk to McDonald's. We're big time. And they were listening. We had the doors to the, to the um, old, old uh, uh, museum open. And George was playing his music. You know, and he plays blues, and he plays all kinds of different things. And the kids were asking, Mr. Solander, what kind of music is that? That's not too bad. And they were dancing around. They didn't care about painting. But they won. They won a prize anyway because <laughs> they were just so happy. So they said, why aren't there more businesses down here? Why can't we buy candy? Why can't we do this? Hey, what's that shop over there? Wouldn't it be great to have this over there? Now, these are the young children. These are our next group coming up. These are the kids 5 to 10, 15 years from now that will be graduating from high school and college and looking for places. These are the kids that we want to cultivate. So in the meantime, one of my jobs is to find businesses to go into these empty buildings. So we started talking to people, and I started communicating with all, a lot of these people, and Elaine and, and the people at the Herald have been wonderful, and a lot of other businesses have been sending me leads and saying, why don't you talk to so-and-so? So-and-so is looking for a place. Sometimes the rents are just too high, so, and the space is too big. So I talked to a couple of women, and I said, well, if we could take this part of the building, and you could take the back part of the building, why don't you two meet and talk about this, and if you 
you like each other, let's work it out. So we've got Clarence Steel Cakes, which is a wonderful cake shop company in, over in, in, in Boardman. She was looking to expand to this area. Now, she was supposed to begin in June, but in order to handle the volume that she's going to do over here, she has to add two major ovens and a big walk-in freezer to her um, uh, shop over in Boardman. So her, she's remodeling now in the front of the um, old bank building in the corner of East Chestnut, uh, Chestnut Street and East State. And uh, Designs by G, Jerry Perna has opened her custom jewelry shop and clothing shop in the back of the bank. But you know how they have the little, the little gate that divides the, the, the bank buildings, you know, so you can't get into the secret part. Well, that's going to be their, their division in, in between their shops. So they, they, they're sharing a space, and they're really happy about it because Jerry can design jewelry for the weddings, you know, and she can recommend people to buy their wedding cakes from her, plus cupcakes. We're all looking for those cupcakes, by the way. They're wonderful. <laughs> And um, upstairs we have a marketing group, Cutco Marketing. And those are the people who come to your doors and say, would you like to buy these knives? They're $100 a set, but they are the most wonderful knives. I, my nephew sold me a whole set. So they're upstairs, and, and so there, those three are sharing a building. And with that vision in mind, we're looking for other people to share the building. So if you have buildings and you're looking, you know, you don't just need one tenant. You, you need multiple sometimes to build a community. And that's what's going to bring our community back. And we have other things planned. Um, uh, one of the other things, that the Blues Fest, of course, is September 10th, and that's, that's going to be bigger than ever. We have um, several of the tourism, um, the bus companies that are going to be bringing bus groups in for that event, which is going to start to build. Um, and one, the, the building that was formerly known as the Vocal Group Hall of Fame and Museum is going to be rededicated in the fall. And I think November is the date. Um, it's going to be the James E. Winter Jr. Art and Cultural Center. We've put a lot of thought into this. And um, the facility was a $2.5 million renovation at the time. And it's designed for a cultural premise. And I've talked to um, the Smithsonian. I've talked to um, different museums and exhibits uh, uh, companies across the United States. And traveling exhibits are more and more reasonable now that the market's so bad, and a lot of museums have closed, so there's a lot of different events that we can have in the museum. We know that there's a need for the arts, a place for them to display. The schools are looking forward to it. A lot of the teachers after, after the Paint the Town contest, even ones that didn't participate, have contacted us about wanting to have classes, to do things in, in, in the uh, Art and Cultural Center. So we're looking at bringing that to life. Another thing that we're talking about is having free trade international fairs there where um, a place called um, 10,000 Villages buys goods from all over the world. And so that's, that's an interesting shop where you can, you can buy um, merchandise, pottery and jewelry and rugs and um, scarves from all over the world. Um, let's see, where am I at now? The FNB building. The FNB building is getting a new look. There's renovations going on there, and I don't know who the tenants are, but I understand that as soon as it's completed, it's fully it's fully rented out. So that kind of completes that downtown. That'll complete that downtown walk here, and um, we also have the Rosewood Guitar Store. And Tom sets uh, he sells vintage guitars uh, locally, but mostly internationally, believe it or not, over the internet. But he's got a beautiful shop up there. It's right across from the Bill Mansion. He invites anybody to stop in who has any interest in music and talk to him and see just the beauty of the shop and, and, and his uh, products. I know that you know that the, flag, the Radisson is under a new flag with the park in, and it's a fresh, bold, colorful brand, but their recent renovations have been made out there, so um, it's got a new look also. So if you're in the area and want to have a cocktail or, or dinner or, or lunch or whatever, stop in and or looking for a meeting place, they're, they're there. I know they're in West Middlesex, but they're still there. Um, and uh, I know everybody's wondering what's going on with the Hampton Inn. You know, that's always a question, what are the winners doing? Well, the, the work is still going on there. We don't know what the opening date is because as construction projects go, they always fall behind. And as you know, we've had a very rainy season. So that work is continuing, and we don't have the opening date there. Thank you all for your time.